Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is January 18th, and, uh, or, yeah, it, today I should be doing the day 19th of the Legal Day Challenge, but it comes up in 40 minutes, but I actually have to go out for dinner. So I figured, uh, but I do have a little bit of time for some reason, so I think I'm just going to do it in reverse, which is that I'm going to do a prime that I haven't done yet today, uh, or for, for today, do a, do a random algo problem that I haven't done yet. And then when I come back from dinner, I'll do the daily problem. So yeah, uh, it's a little bit out of order, but you know we'll, we'll see where the RNG takes us, and we'll you know have fun together, uh, hopefully. And hopefully this isn't too hard. I should have maybe limit it to, to not hard because I do actually have to go to dinner, uh, to meeting a buddy. But that said, let's get started. Uh, today's farm is 759 employee free time. We're given a list schedule of employees which represent the working time for each employee. Each employee has a list of non overlapping intervals, and these intervals are in sorted order. We turn the list of finite intervals representing common positive length free time for all. Do, 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 do. Okay, hey man, I read the words, but I have no idea what this means. Okay, let's take a look at the, at the example. Uh, man, I need more focus, I think, maybe. I'm just, I don't know. I just don't care that much. But okay, so then, so there are three employees. How, how do you see? What? What is the schedule? This is like impossible to read. Uh, maybe I should have read the thing. Okay. How do you have three employees? Oh, this is one employee, this is one employee, this is one employee. So the first employee, they should just write this, right? Like the first employee is one, two, five, six, one, the second, okay. And then, okay, so basically you're just trying to find, um, <clears throat> yeah, you're basically you're trying to find the, the time slot that is actually on screen. Um, that's overlapping for all the employees. Actually, this is funny because I think uh, I I don't know that I mentioned this, but I I do when I when I was an interviewer. Uh, so, this is a long time ago now. Um, I haven't worked in a while, but uh, so this is a long time now. So maybe I can now say it a little bit. But when I was an interviewer, uh, and I and actually when I was an interviewer, I mostly did system architecture because I was just one of the few people actually qualified to do that interview. But I also step in once in a while for um for coding interviews. And when I did coding interviews, this this I have like I have two problems that I like to to ask and, and a variation of this problem is is actually something that I ask because there are a lot of variation on this one. So then there are a lot of follow ups and and uh, and you can kind of figure out how, how they kinda of, you know um, adjust the answers to to more difficult problems. But uh, and the way that I would solve this obviously depends. Uh, there is, I, I think people always tell me that there's like a greedy way, uh, and I'm sure there is. Though n is only fifty, so it's not even worth like doing anything that silly. Um, or there are n employees, and each of them can have n, so there's like twenty five hundred um, intervals. But um. But yeah, but uh, but there are a couple of ways you can do it. The way that I always treat these things, if you've been watching me long enough, and I think nowadays a lot of people have been doing it my way more. Um, not to say that I invented it, but I think I popularized it along a lot of people because um, I think people usually do these in a more like like greedy, structured kind of way. And maybe in a lot of those cases, it is linear, especially when you're only doing with two schedules or two intervals. But um, but but this is the way that I've always consistently done it, just because it's it's, you know, I don't know. For me, it's just having one thing to to kind of uh, have an idea about. And the way that I would do it is by um, uh, what's it called? Defense sorting, right? Or um, defense based. What what would I call it? It's it's a sweep line, defense based sweep line, right? So basically, the idea here is that, and you know, we can visualize it a little bit. Uh, let me bring bring up my drawing thingy. Uh, and you know, I'm not. Uh, should I take the pen? I mean, you know, basically, you just have a, a an an x axis, and of course, your intervals are just going to be like you know, yeah, do 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 for one person. You can have this for another person, and you know. And maybe like a third person is like here. And of course, you, your goal here is just to go from left to right and then sweeping all these critical points along the way, right? Uh, maybe I should choose a different color. 
right oops uh yeah like here 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 and then, and then and based on those events you want to um <clears throat> you're able to model this in a sta uh, finite state automata or something like this where you can basically just try to figure out what you want at that time uh and depending on the problem there are you know you you, you have to figure out what states you care about or not uh in this one it seems like it should be pretty straightforward so uh or to define the states not the problem is straightforward but we'll, we'll get we'll get it together so yeah, so first we'll just have a defense, right? And then now we have for S and Y and no, 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 for employee schedule or Y schedule maybe, I don't know, in schedule. And then now for S, E and Y schedule, um, and this naming is maybe a little bit terrible, but yeah, you can do defense dot append, the starting event. So you have to X, you have to starting. I just, you know, maybe I'll call it start, right? So start N is equal to one, two or something like this. Just enums, right? And of course, if you are in production, we'll do real enums, but we could do this. And in theory, you can also, um, you don't actually need this in a case because of the way the, um, the, oh, am I right on this? Oh, no, no, yeah, it's on sorted order. Uh, in the way that this is constructed, you don't actually need to keep track of the index um, or like the employee, right? Because it's just a lot of segments and you want to make sure that, you know, uh, let's just say n is equal to length of schedule actually. But, but yeah, but you can maybe if you want to, and maybe I'm wrong on this, so we'll see. And then defense.append, we we'll do e plus one, we have n, right? Uh, the way the reason why uh, actually I do e plus one, I think this is the part that we have to think about is whether they're inclusive or exclusive. Um, the five five is a final answer because they have zero length. So what does that mean, right? So that means that they overlap with zero length. You do not want the answer. I think that's fine. I think in in special discrete defense. Uh, it just really depends on how you sort it. And I think the way that we sort this, because we get rid of, um, because on type words, we get rid of start before the end. Um, that, that will always create more overlaps in a greedy kind of way, which should be what we want. Okay. So yeah, so then now we can do events.sort, right? And then now we can do for uh, x, as in for the x axis, and then type in events. Um, then now what do we want to do, right? So we have a current, like, uh, current is equal to zero. This uh, the n number of current overlaps, right? Um, <clears throat> yeah, and that's really it. Oh, and I guess you have to keep track of the answer. <laughs> oh, and the uh, yeah, okay. Well, well I'll, I'll write. Um, is it beginning this uh, Something like this. We we won't go over it. I mean, we'll go over it, but uh, but I'll just as a placeholder for now. Um, but yeah, so basically, if the type is equal to start, then what do we do? That means that that means that we want to add one more interval that's inside our number of intervals right now, right, or schedules. And then else, else t is equal to, uh, well, n, so we could subtract one. So then what are the states that we care about? So the state that we care about is if current gets to n, right? That means that if current is equal to n, then that means that you have n intervals inside the current uh, sweep line. So that's the beginning of all the common uh, free time, right? So if this is the case, we do start is equal to, um, I guess, x, right? Okay. And then, uh, and then another state that you may care about, and Technically, you can only get up to here, of course, if t is equal to start, because you, you can only increment to n, right? Um, otherwise, you know, all the other states just, you know, well, there's only one to get get to n. Uh, I say it this way because the other state is, let's say you, you drop from n to n minus 1, so then now that's the other state that you care about, because now you have no longer a common positive thing. So if this is the case, n, um, n t is equal to n, that means that the, I mean, you could write this in a number of ways, but it just means that it used to be n, now it's n minus one. So then now we have to do, uh, that means that the end of the common thing, right? And the common thing is going to be start and the current x, right? And then you could, 
append this. <coughs> Wait, did I misread this one? I did misread this one, sorry. But, but in a way, because uh, for some reason I was solving for common overlapping times. But now that I think about it, I was like, oh, that doesn't make sense uh, with the negative infinity and stuff. But so, yeah, 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 yeah. So, but basically now, the, uh, so I made a mistake. Okay, let, let me step back for a second. So I made a mistake. I thought it was the common, uh, the schedule in which, the time style in which all the things are common. But it turns out it's the, um, it should be the common free time, which means that there's no one, right? So that actually is an easy fix. This is why I like it this way, because it's just representing, like I said, the finite state automata. Maybe it demonstrates my point, even though maybe I'm not really happy. Because now this stuff is wrong, but it, the idea is still right, which is that if current is zero, if current is zero, it only means that previous is one, because it can only go from one to zero after a change. So then we start the next. Otherwise, if this is equal to one, that means someone is um, starting the schedule. So you have to go f make sure that it goes from zero to one. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's the only fix, kind of. You may, we might have to um, take care of the negative infinity stuff. Uh, but yeah, let's take a little spin. Uh, what did I do wrong? Did I misunderstand this? For schedule in schedule? Not, it, oh, it's an interval object. Not because I, I saw it like this, and I thought that would give us a tuple, but uh, but actually, apparently, it's an interval object with a start end. So okay, so do 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 do. Easy fix, right? That's where uh, abstraction is nice. Don't have to worry about you know, list have no object. Oh, uh, we might have to fix how we. No, wait, no, we don't. Wait, what, what is the error message? Uh, why dot append first dot start? Wait, where? Oh, 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 we have to return interval objects. Also, we should reset this, though. It doesn't really matter because, you know, this, there's only one way to get here and there's only one way to get here, but, and it has to, you know, but, uh, hmm. What is this? But I think it, 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 we have to return an interval. I think that's why. And and we return a tuple because I didn't realize. But uh, so yeah, yeah, it's just new interval. Um, is it new? Am I just like, I don't think it's new. I'm, I'm mixing languages in my head, maybe. Uh, what am I doing? A list of intervals, right? Isn't this a list of intervals? Is it new? Am I just confusing it? I don't know languages. <laughs> no, that's not right. But, huh, what is going on? Int and none type. Oh, so start may be none. Did I mess this up? Oh, 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 because start is none when um, this is infinity because well, this far it'll be impossible to get, but here it goes to infinity. So yeah, so we just, I guess we have to do like if start is not none, just so that we don't kind of do it that way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> the idea is right. Maybe I. Hmm. I think this is. Uh, we might have to change this part again because um, I might have I. Like I said, I was misunderstanding what they were trying to do, so I was greedy on the other way. So basically now we want to get free time, and free time starts exclusive of the endpoint. So I think we can do this. Um, and do we, what order do we want it in? I guess it doesn't really matter the order, because we might have to add a thing that, uh, like, you know, start is not equal to x, just in case that, like, it... it it shouldn't, but maybe when it starts and it ends and stuff like that, and it's it counts like a zero length thing as a thing. But yeah, very easy fix though. Uh, I don't think I described it as well. This is a, just a lot of experience. Um, but the idea is that um, what you how you handle um, the edges of like two intervals bumping against each other, right? And for the other one, 
um, it was n plus one because we wanted to overlap that and count that. But here now we don't anymore because we want to count the free time. So we're greedy in that way so that we can have if statements here. Let's give it some mid. I think we should be okay, but maybe I have some weird edge case. Uh, looks good though. So I'm pretty happy about that. Um, but yeah, very powerful idea, very powerful technique, sweep line, defense, uh, and all these things. Um, yeah, as you can see, I even, like, I technically solved two problems. I mean, if you want to say that, because I did it with the other one where we actually kept track of all the times everything overlaps, right? So, uh, yeah, and you can obviously do, you know, more funky things depending on the question, like, oh, what if only two of, or 40% or what, well, you know, whatever, right? Of the people uh, are, are free or something like this. And you can definitely, you know, create intervals that way using your custom rules in very easy, straightforward way. It's definitely a powerful technique, uh, just in general for competitive. For interviews, I don't know. I mean, like, I, I like to give it, but I don't think it's that common, to be honest. But uh, yeah, um, that's all I have for this one. Let me know what you think. Stay good, stay healthy, take your mental health. I'll see y'all later and take care. Bye-bye.